Well, good morning, everyone. We are back with a, a traditional tale. Ah! Oh! Computer's about to fall off my knee. Uh, sorry about that. It's Monday morning. I hope you've had a lovely weekend. Can't believe the Mac just decided to jump to uh, onto my uh, off my lap. <sighs> Calamity already. You will know this one. I found one that you will know um, by a different name, though. See if you can work out what it's called. It's other name. Obviously, it's a very old story, so I know it. Oh, here go the dogs. I will just pause you a minute while the dogs go crackers. Two seconds. So, I know it as the Frog Prince. See what you know it as. One evening, a young princess put on her bonnet and clogs and went out to take a walk by herself in a wood. And when she came to a cool spring of water that rose in the midst of it, she sat herself down to rest a while. Now she had a golden ball in her hand, which was her favourite plaything, and she was always tossing it up into the air and catching it again as it fell. After a time, she threw it up so high that she missed catching it as it fell, and the ball bounded away along the ground, till at last it fell down into a spring. The princess looked into the spring after her ball, but it was so very deep, and she could not see the bottom of it. She began to cry about her loss and said, Oh, if only I could get my ball again, I would give all my fine clothes and jewels and everything that I have in the world. While she was speaking, a frog put its head out of the water and said, Princess, why do you weep so? Oh, said she, what can you do for me, you nasty frog? My golden ball has fallen into the spring. The frog said, I want not your pearls and jewels and fine clothes, but if you will love me and let me live with you and eat from me off your golden plate and sleep upon your bed, I will bring you your ball again. Oh, what nonsense, thought the princess. This silly frog is talking. He can never even get out of the spring to visit me, though he may be able to get my ball for me, and therefore I will tell him he shall have what he asks. So she said to the frog, Well... If you bring me my ball, I will do as you ask. So the frog put his head down and dived deep under the water. And after a little while, he came up again with the ball in his mouth and threw it on the edge of the spring. As soon as the young princess saw the ball, she ran to pick it up and she was so overjoyed to have it in her hand again that she forgot. She never thought of the frog, but ran home as fast as she could. The frog called after her, Ah, princess, stay and take me with you, as you said. But she did not stop and she didn't hear a word he said. The next day, just as the princess had sat down to dinner, she heard a strange... Splash, splash, splash. At the door, as if something was coming up the marble staircase. And soon afterwards, there was a gentle knock at the door and a little voice cried out and said, Open the door my princess dear open the door to true love here and mind the words that thou and i said by the fountain cool in the greenwood shade then the princess ran to the door and opened it and there she saw the frog whom she had quite forgotten at this sight she was sadly frightened and shutting the door as fast as she could came back to her seat the king her father seeing that something had frightened her asked what was the matter there is a nasty frog at the door she said I lifted my ball out for me out of the spring this morning. I told him that he should live here with me, thinking that he could never get out of the spring. But he's here at the door and he wants to come in. While she was speaking at the door, the frog knocked again and said, Open the door, my princess dear. Open the door to thy true love here. And mind the words that thou and I said by the fountain cool in the greenwood shade. Then the king said to the young princess, as you have given your word, you must keep it, so go and let him in. She did so, and the frog hopped into the room, and then straight on, tap, tap, flesh, flesh, from the bottom of the room to the top, till he came to the table where the princess sat. Pray lift me up onto the chair, please, said he to the princess, and let me sit next to you. As soon as she had done this, the frog said, Please put your plate near to me, that I may eat out of it. She did this, and when he had eaten as much as, she, as he could, he said, Oh, I'm now very tired. Please carry me upstairs and put me into your bed. 
And as the princess was very unwilling, she took him up by the hand and put him under the, up upon her pillow of her own bed, where he slept all night long, full to the stomach from the lovely food. As soon as it was light, he jumped up, hopped downstairs and went out of the house. <sighs> now then, thought the princess, at last he is gone and I shall be troubled with him no more. But she was mistaken, for when night came again, she heard the same tapping at the door. And the frog once more came and said, Open the door, my princess dear, open the door to thy true love here, and mind the words that thou and I said by the fountain cool in the greenwood shade. And when the princess opened the door, the frog came in and slept upon her pillow as before till the morning broke. And the third night he did the same. But when the princess was awoke on the following morning, she was astonished to see instead of the frog a handsome prince gazing on her with the most beautiful eyes she had ever seen and standing at the head of her bed. He told her that he had been enchanted by a spiteful mean fairy who had changed him into a frog and that he had been fated so as to live some time till some princess should take him out of the spring and let him eat from her plate and sleep upon her bed for three nights in a row. You, said the prince, have broken his cruel charm and now I have nothing to wish for but that you should go with me into my father's kingdom where I will marry you and love you for as long as you shall live. The young princess, you may be sure, was not long in saying yes to him and as they spoke a gay coach drove up with eight beautiful horses pulling it decked with plumes of feathers and a golden harness and behind the coach rode the prince's servant, faithful Heinrich, who had cried at the misfortunes of his dear master during this enchantment for so long and bitterly waiting that his heart had well nearly burst. They took a leave of the king, got into the coach with the eight horses and set out full of joy and merriment for the prince's own kingdom, when, which they reached safely and there they lived happily a great many years. The end. Have a lovely day and I will see you tomorrow.